I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about false hope and breakups. You know, Margaret, there's a lot of talk about false hope when it comes to breakups. Yes, there is. Meaning, you know, that, you know, you're getting your hopes up, that the situation will turn around, that it's very unlikely that the situation uh, can turn itself around, and that you're hanging on to this idea of any false hope that there, something can happen when it's not going to happen. Now, some people will say or believe that hope is a bad thing in a situation like a breakup. Like if you are hoping for too long, that maybe it keeps you waiting around right. or wasting your time. Right. But we're gonna talk about this today because it's really important to understand why hope can be a very good thing. Yes. Margaret did some research. What do you have on hope? Well, one of the things- I hope I this is good. One of the things that I found out was that there's a great deal of written about hope in relationships. And uh, many people are, are thinking that hope is a bad thing and that it can keep you stuck. So anyway, uh, let me share some of my thoughts and my research with you. Um, according to a recent study done, done by the Kansas State University and published in the Social, Psychological, and Personality Science Journal, doesn't that sound learned? Yeah, they uh, couldn't have shortened that at all? I guess not. More than one-third of separated couples reunite. More than one-third? Uh, yep, slightly more than one-third. Okay. So it is possible, mm -hmm. okay? It's not terribly likely, but it is certainly possible. Mm -hmm. the and the thing that, you know, I think about when you give out numbers like that is how many behaviors did they exhibit that turned the right. person off with the exactly. begging and the pleading that they didn't exactly. allow the person to come back to them. Right. You know, that what would the chances be if you were really growing while in no contact and allow that person to come back? What I think it would be much higher than sure that. Sure it would. Sure it would. The most popular reason for reunification, according to the study, is that people thought their partner may have changed. Ah, okay. interesting. Yeah. The second most common reason is that people felt they had a major emotional investment in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with the time you've been together and the quality of the relationship. And this is exactly what we talk about with attachment. Absolutely. Absolutely. A common definition of hope is a feeling of expectation or desire for a particular thing to happen. Mm -hmm. What's good about hope? It can help with motivation and outlook. Okay. Yes. What's bad about hope? It can lead to devastating disappointment and impede the ability to move on from a breakup. That can be true too. Okay. Yes. So we hear the concerns. Um, about that from others. Mm -hmm. And there's always more than one way to look at things. Yep. There is much agreement in the literature on breakups that post breakup, most of us human beings are very open to growing and changing, mm -hmm. more so than at many other times of life. I've been saying this yes, for you years have. and years. Yes, you have. I don't think there's anything more motivating than a breakup. Right. And so, you know, that is one of the reasons that I love the hope aspect in growing during no right. contact. Right. Because that's when people are more motivated. Right. So the equilibrium of our lives are disturbed by a breakup. And that makes us much more willing and open to change. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can't help myself with Latin derivatives. Um, the word in Latin for I breathe is spiro, S-P-I-R-O, I breathe. Mm -hmm. The word for hope is spero, S-P, 
E-R-O. Okay, there's a one letter difference. And I think that in the ancient mind, the two were connected. And there's a common phrase used called sparrow, sparrow, which is translated as, while I breathe, I hope. Okay, that's, it's part of human being, yeah. being a human being. Um, like when you break up, you hope you can breathe the next day, right? Because people will say, I really couldn't breathe. It, it took my breath away. The mm -hmm. whole thing so startled me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. In Christian tradition, hope is a theological virtue, believe it or not, along with faith and charity. So hope overall as a, as a concept has a big reputation. Okay. Some of the literature on breakups offers reasons to give up hope on a reunification. Mm -hmm. Some of the literature also describes a process for giving up hope. We think it's always good to consult Dr. John Bowlby on any matter relating to attachment. Mm -hmm. We have talked about him before, and what he says is always useful. Mm -hmm. He describes how small children go through a specific process when separated from a loved one. Okay. The first stage is protest. Mm -hmm. All right, the child screams, yells, cries. If old enough, they throw themselves on the floor and have a couple of good tantrums. They protest in every way they can think of. They then look around to see if they can see mother or whoever the object is, or look for her in whatever way they can find. Mm -hmm. When none of this works and the loved person does not appear, children go into a state of despair. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that breaking up with somebody is no different. Um, even though we're grown-ups, we're losing a dearly loved one we protest, we do whatever we do to protest, including beg, plead. Um, and then we naturally and automatically, as part of the whole thing, go into a state of despair. Yep. And if you think about it, the word despair really means unable to hope or breathe. Okay? Um, wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, when you think about it, yeah. despair without hope. Without, yeah. It, so it's... why would you want to give up hope? Well, yeah. And particularly if you're especially depressed, I would be worried about urging someone to give up hope too early. This is really important. Yeah, Margaret, I to, really want you to emphasize yeah, this. You would have to calculate how depressed and devastated this person is um, before you advise them to give up hope. Now, as I'm going to talk about later, I think the natural process that we go through under these circumstances will eventually take care of that. Mm -hmm. But I would be very hesitant in, a, in an early stage to suggest giving up hope. It may be the only reason why this person breathes the next day. Okay? So you have to, to some extent, make some judgment about how well put together this person is. Yes. All right? And sadly, a lot of people certainly don't have any education or qualifications to be taking away hope in a situation where that's very painful like a breakup. It scares me as, a, as the oldest therapist on earth. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, people can remain in this state of despair for days or weeks. More like months. Or months, yes. But finally begin to interact with their environment again, but with a much more detached way, mm -hmm. never with the same enthusiastic they had before. Um, at least unless something changes for them or they get the person back or they love someone else. Uh -huh. But that, that growth that you do in that time is so important because you're going to meet somebody again if you don't get back with your ex. And you would be surprised how many people have come to me over the years. I just had somebody recently that had a breakup years ago and then they said to me just recently, I didn't do the work. Yeah. I didn't sure. do the work sure. and here I am again and now I'm kicking myself yeah. because I found somebody even greater for me than my last ex and now here I am and now he's really beating himself up. Never helpful. Many, many of the calls we, we receive, I believe, involve people who are very much in that state of despair. Okay, they've begged, they've pleaded. Uh, their partner has not come back, and they'll always say to her, I'm never going to hear from that person again. 
Um, and we sometimes have to remind them that someone who's been with you and intimate with you and spent time with you over a long period of time cannot forget you in 10 minutes. That's not how human beings work. Yeah. All right? Yep. So that is, despair is the opposite of hope. Yeah. Um, you know, and Margaret, a lot of times people just need to have that time away from you before they realize what you mean to them. Right. And I have seen situations where I thought, well, I think the chances of them hearing from this person are really low, and then they come back. And then they come back. And it's like, so, you know, that's one of my frustrations is when people try and take away hope is like, you don't know no. that that person's not going to come back. Now, we, of course, are always concerned about you guys being in an abusive situation right. that we don't want you to go back to abusive people that are mistreating you but you know a lot of times people break up for you know there's so many different reasons that you know who knows what that person's gonna do that's exactly right so what we're saying is whether you're a baby or a grown-up the emotional impact of losing someone loved is very similar and it's normal to be in a state of despair yeah um, the good news is that the natural process after however many days, weeks, or months you need, you will begin to engage with the environment again. Mm -hmm. um, again, not quite as enthusiastically as before. Yeah. The advice to give up hope is very understandable. The thought behind it is that if we continue to hope for a reunion, sometimes beyond the point of the reasonable, mm -hmm. we can get bitterly disappointed or even stuck and unable to move on. Mm -hmm. So we can absolutely see people's concern. Yeah. And they're talking about, I think, false hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So I would prefer, and even hope, to leave hope as a good thing in human experience and focus on the grief process, which by now is well known and well documented. Most of us are familiar with the stages of denial. This can't be happening to me. Mm -hmm. Anger, how could he or she do this to me? Yep. Bargaining, bargaining is the if onlys. If only we had done this differently, if only I had not said that one day, if only, if only, if only. And then the pure grief where you're simply sad, mm -hmm. okay? And you think about this person and you cry. And if you cry, it's okay. In fact, it's a healthy thing. After that, comes the final phase, which is acceptance that the breakup happened mm -hmm. um, and there isn't much you can do to fix it. Um, once you hit the acceptance phase, you can begin to think about moving on. Yep. Okay. And in the meantime, we certainly hope that you're working on yourself throughout any of these processes of grief. Dr. Freud said that over time, we slowly withdraw or, or take back the energy that we have invested in the other person, okay? So it's hard to think of energy flying through the air, but eventually, um, if you've left someone and you're grieving, slowly you take back the energy you left with them, all right? In the meantime, it's important for us to jump on our openness and willingness to change and grow after a breakup. Jump on, I said, like get right on it. Sources of continued hope around relationships might come from your faith in yourself that you will be able to grow and change yep. and look at what happened in this relationship that you may need to own or change. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. So the hope is going to come from your hope and belief in yourself that you can do this. And you can. And you can. All right? Absolutely. Okay. You can't change anything you don't take responsibility for. It's important to work on your own strengths and to have faith in your ability to problem solve and change and grow if you choose to. It's important to hope, have hope that there are healthy relationships in the world and that you, perhaps the new improved you, deserve to have one. Okay? Yep. It's important to understand that each of you are going through a unique experience in many ways. Mm 
because so many breakups have similarities but differences and we're all different in how we deal with things and cope with things and a lot of times hope gets us motivated right. at a difficult time absolutely and keeps us focused on how we're going to grow and the areas we know we need to absolutely. improve absolutely and what I have seen many times is that when people think they have less chance of getting their ex back or they have less hope that the situation can turn around, that they get less motivated in changing and growing. Right. Ideally, we want you to grow for yourself. We do. We want you to do this for you. We want you to change for you. But many of you simply aren't at that place where you can do right. that. So we'll take what we can get as long as you guys are growing. As long as you're, if you're motivated to only get this person back, then we'll, we'll start there. Yeah. Um, and of course, at that point, you don't think there's any other solution other than getting that person back. But if you do the work and you grow and you look at yourself, whether it's this person or another person, you will be better off for it. Absolutely. Right. All right. We hope you enjoy this video. Let us know in the comment section. Okay. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.